Welcome to my 10-minute art essay crash course, where we'll be going through a thorough analysis of an artist and their techniques. Today, we'll be talking about Mark Kinn, whose artworks you may have probably seen in one of SG famous tourist spots. No, not that one. Yes, that, with a huge gigantic floating baby. So, more to know about Mark Kinn. He first came to fame in the early 1990s, a time period when artists made a radical break from modernism. They tried to push the boundaries of what it was to make art and experience it. He was born in Britain in 1964, and now a leading contemporary artist who is known for his controversial and grotesque works, some which are displayed in public spaces like on the streets, squares, and parks of Britain, or museums and galleries, which had caused some impassioned debates over whether or not they are the right ones to occupy public spaces, and what message is that artist trying to convey in these changing times? Kin's artworks cover a wide range of themes that are based on the experience that an individual may have living in the real world, such as time, mortality, and physical existence of the human body and its functions. In most of his series of artworks, the human body is seen to be his common subject matter that can be seen in his artworks such as his marble sculpture series of women and the disabled that aim to empower them. And in his other artworks like Body Alteration and Emotional Detox, that focuses on living people and their relationship with others and their own bodies, questioning the different kinds of beauty standards and the reasons why people are compelled to undergo surgical procedures to transform their own. He also has other works that explore abstract concepts such as that and reproduction. For example, in his work Garden, it displays a full botanical garden consisting of different kinds of flowers from around the world at bloom, which are frozen and displayed in silicon. This piece shows the idea of eternal beauty and death, how things are temporary and not eternal. Ken has also shown a keen interest in the relationship between man and nature, how it is mediated by human desires, and also representing social issues in our current society, such as Black Lives Matter, feminism, and LGBTQ. Mark Kinn likes using a variety of mediums in his works, largely experimental and unconventional mediums that are symbolic as he believes that the medium plays an important role in conveying his ideas clearly and directly to the viewers. In some of his famous works, like Self, Garden, and DNA Portrait of Sir John Sulston, he uses organic-based mediums such as blood, plants, and DNA that decay over time. Though these mediums may have suited the artist's intention due to its strange and unusual properties, it poses a challenge to him on how to preserve his artwork long enough for it to be displayed in mediums or art galleries for maybe 5, 10, or 50 years. Certainly, viewers wouldn't want to see a rotten or melted version of his artwork, right? So, he thought of this brilliant idea of submerging his piece into silicon. It then undergoes constant freezing in a chamber while it is being displayed. For some of his other works that may require more scientific methods, he uses advanced technology to advance this like in a series of DNA portraits, which required him to do DNA listing of his subject matters. And in his series titled Labyrinths, he had to do fingerprint scanning in order to capture his fingerprints, which were then enlarged and casted onto bronze. This shows how the integration of scientific concepts into his artistic techniques allows him to dive deeper into the identity of a person and represent their unique characteristics of each individual in unprofound and more authentic ways. For his other sculptural art pieces, he uses mediums such as marble, gold, or bronze, mainly for his public art pieces, which are ideal to withstand harsh weather conditions. Other than his 3D sculptures, Quinn is also well known for his other artworks like his hyperrealist oil paintings of flowers, photorealist paintings of irises, created using an airbrush, and even a self-portrait tapestry. Now, without further ado, let's go deep into the analysis in one of Markin's most famous and shocking artworks, Self. At first glance, you may first ask yourself if the artist was a madman of making a self-portrait of himself with his own blood, which is a reasonable question to ask. Though the shock viewers may experience when they see this art piece for the first time is probably the most prominent element in its, in its success as it leaves a lasting impression on them. 
the sight of blood has this repulsive effect on its own, and adding on to the fact that public displays of real bodily fluid still retains its sense of taboo in our society. Which may lead to those who have recovered from their shock ask questions like, what is the meaning behind the use of blood, and the artist's intention of using it, which we will be covering soon. First, let's go through the artist's long and vigorous process of how he made this piece. At the start of the process, Kim had to take 10 pins of his own blood for each self-piece over 5 separate sessions. Talk about dedication, right? He then made a cast of his head by covering it with an all-over mask of Caster of Paris. The casting process that Kim used has picked up many tender textures from the surface of Kim's face, such as the eyelashes, creases on the lips, and folds of flesh on the ears that gave its sculpture a sense of realism. This perfect impression of the artist's facial features was then removed, filled with blood and frozen. When it was solid, the blood head was then mounted with a perspex box filled with silicon oil at a sub-zero temperature before being displayed. The freezing process called cryopreservation that the artwork had to go through shows similarities to a life support system at which the artwork is dependent on the electricity that keeps the freeze chamber operating thus suggesting other issues regarding life and healthcare of how we are currently dependent on technology to survive this modern age and leaves us questioning the limitations of it as well. This symbolism can be substituted for other forms of dependence like addiction, something that the artist has experienced early in his career. In addition, the use of cryopreservation reminds us of other preservation techniques used in ancient times like in burial chambers and the mummification process in ancient Egypt, which were used to preserve an individual's identity. If you dare to just take a closer look at the face of the sculpture, you'll observe how the artist composed the facial expression of the face, such that its head is subtly upturned with its lips pursed and eyes closed. This expression creates a sense of peacefulness and serenity, as if it is asleep or gracefully diseased, which may create a mixed feeling to the viewers as that sense of tranquility opposes that first feeling of shock. This diseased look is further enhanced by the blue and red colored bruises and marks left behind by the mold during the casting process, which makes the head look decayed. What is intriguing about the artist's use of blood is the meaning behind this action. In Western culture, Precious materials such as gold, silver, or bronze are used for sculptures to show what's worth, whereas blood has no monetary value but is essential to life. The use of blood further lifts up the status of this sculpture as a pure self-portrait of the artist, as not only is the artist's face look realistic, but is also created by the artist's own blood. It's as if the artist is being his real inner self, literally, being in a vulnerable state in front of many viewers. The large amount of blood Kin uses in his artwork would also suggest the importance of the vital properties of the substance used to sustain the physical form of his artwork. The ongoing public debate endangered by Kin's sculptures demonstrates how public art remains a vigorously contested, politicized, and emotive topic. The conversation surrounds the choice of public artworks is complex, nuanced, and continually evolving. Even what initially appears to be a simple gesture of solidarity can carry with it far more complicated implications. What an artwork depicts and where it stands is only one facet of this discussion. As a matter of fact, it is up to us, the public, to determine the value and worth of the public artwork, as we are the audience and that this artwork is made for, reflecting on issues that some of us are currently facing and raising awareness about it. Finn is able to effectively do this by making his works hair-raising and controversial that successfully catches the public eyes and makes us reflect on ourselves the meaning behind his piece.